<coughs> Hello everybody, my name is Arun Mahindakar. My blog is at theblogs.asp.net slash nmarun and my Twitter handle is nmarun53. Today we'll be talking about how to set up Karma to run unit tests in PhantomJS and Chrome. So if you don't know what PhantomJS is, it's a headless browser, so you don't see a browser popping up, but it will still give you all the capabilities of running code inside um, inside a browser. So um, for the sake of this example, I've written my unit tests in Jasmine, although you can write it in any other framework. Um, if you don't know what Angular is, and this is what I'm mostly concentrating on in this session, is um, these are these JavaScript code is written mostly for Angular applications. So if you don't know what Angular is, you can watch my video getting to uh, getting to know Angular JS. It's a YouTube video. You can just search for that. All right, let's get started. So um, so first thing you do is you install uh, Node.js, right, which is which is kind of a um, a package application. You can you can you can run a lot of things. You can do a lot of things in Node. Um, so once you run that, you run these commands, individual commands. So you're basically saying node package manager install uh, hyphen G is saying that you may want to make it global, although this is up to you. You don't you don't necessarily need to do a global installation and then you give the package name. What's there in this parenthesis is what I have. This is, these are the version that I have on my local machine. So you don't need to pass this. So this is the only command you need to run. So likewise, that is the only command you need to run. So anything outside, just ignore the parenthesis for the command purposes. Right? Save dev uh, marks it as a dev dependency. Um, that when then you run the phantom package and then you install the Jasmine package again as a dependency and you install the um, phantom js launcher karma phantom js launcher again as a dev dependency and then same thing with chrome launcher as a dev dependency so you don't need to do this uh, if you don't want to run it in chrome if you only want to run it in phantom then you don't need this but i'm just running it here just to show you what you get by by running it by running it uh, by adding this, this package we'll just see how how that will help you change the browsers okay and then once you're done with all of this you just do karma in it and then a configuration file name i've just given it karma 2 here so this will create an instance the the configuration file it will give you, give you the basic uh, framework for that you don't have to answer every question there you can just choose the defaults we will see what uh, we'll see what how to modify that uh, on the front end side, on the you know, in a tool, uh, just I'll be using Visual Studio. So you'll see how to modify those that file to suit your needs. So uh, once you run this command, your file should be created in that that path that you create. So for me, I'm wanting to create it in this path here. I hope you guys can see this. So um, it'll be creating the Karma config file there. So now I'm just going to Visual Studio. And there it is. It says the file was created on so and so time, and that is the complete section that the init command or the init keyword creates. So what it what it asks you, what it probably asked you for the base path. It said what kind of framework you're going to use. Like I said, I've done it in Jasmine. I've run my tests in I've written my tests in Jasmine. Um, Karma adapter. You can go to this link here to see what are the other adapters that you have, and then these are the list of files that I want to load in my browser. So basically what I'm saying here is these are all the Angular files, right? That are my dependencies that I require. And then this is my application code, right? I have some controllers, I have uh, services and I have directors. So I have all these three things. And then all my unit tests are in that folder. So anything start.js, um, test spec start.js. So just take anything and run the tests there. Um, it will ask you for the log information. For now, I just put it as info. But if you face into some issues, you know, you're not seeing some of the tests are failing and you don't know the exact reason, you want to change it to a debug. That way it will give a lot more information. And for now, I'm starting this this uh, with the PhantomJS. I'll show you how PhantomJS works. 
um, you can change it to Chrome. We will change it to Chrome soon after we see how Phantom JS works. And then there are these two options, single run and auto watch. So what single run is, is it runs all of these tests once and then exits. So right, the, your command, we'll see what the command is. It'll exit that command. Um, so for now, I've set it to true. And the reason why you would want to set it to false is during development time, if you are um, um, extreme TDD kind of a guy, right? You would want to set this to true during development. Sorry, you want to set it to false during development. And then you would want to set auto watch as true. What that means is it will start watching all of these files. Right. Of course, you won't be making any changes to these because these are Angular files, but any changes that you make to your code files, your code files, whether it's the unit test files or the actual code file, the application code files, it will watch them and anytime there is a change, it runs the test again. So the benefit is, so you, the way you'll be doing is you'll first write the unit test, it will fail. Uh, so as soon as you hit a save button, it will run the tests. Um, you will see a failing test and then you'll write just enough code to uh, write to pass that unit test, right? So you can do it like in a live manner. For now, I won't be doing that, but you can do it for a live as a live manner in a live scene scenario kind of a thing, right? So that's about it. Um, this is pretty much what the basics of this file is. So let's go ahead and run the command. Now the command to run is karma start karma config.js. So that's the config file that you just created. It's there in that path. So when I run this, you'll see that Phantom is already started um, and then it runs the test and it says eight of eight succeeded. Right? Look at the time it takes here. Right? So it's really, really, really fast. Right? So I said we have also we have also installed the Chrome launcher. Right? So let me go ahead and change the browser to Chrome. Then now when I run my tests, so it says starting browser Chrome and then it starts the browser. All the unit tests are running in there and then soon this browser will close and again you'll get the same answer. You see that this time is about the same, right? It's just that you have a browser experience. I'm not too sure why you would need this. I, I personally uh, fear, uh, personally prefer running it in PhantomJS. That way I don't see uh, pop-ups going around, right? And browser getting popped up. Right. Okay. So now that we have done this, uh, let's go ahead. Okay. Let's go ahead and see uh, how we can get code coverage on on these tests. So what you do is you install um, this Karma coverage package. Again, I've done it as a global one, and that is the current version that I have. As I said earlier, you just have to run this part of the command. You don't need to. You don't need to, to write that. I mean, of course, that will fail your your uh, installation. But you just run this part of the command, um, and then once you're inst once you're done with the installation, you have to tell your config file that <coughs> you're telling your your config file, hey, look, um, I want some kind of a preprocessor here to see that I want coverage for anything that is there in the app configuration app folder right so here are all the files so it gives me configuration information for all of these files and then i'm telling here that i need the report in a text format now if i provide a file here right i think that is the syntax txt it will actually print it in that file in the local using the, the, the local path <coughs> Excuse me. If not, it will print the output on the command prompt screen and that's what I want. So I won't provide the file name. The other thing I'll have to do is change the reporter set to say, don't give me only progress and give me also the code coverage part of it. That's about it. I'm running it in PhantomJS. I'm still running it in PhantomJS. So I'll go ahead and let me just clear the screen here and then let me, I'm going to run this test again. So this time you, you will see the, the phantom j is still running and look at that so all your tests have passed and then you're seeing the coverage information here right so you're saying the controller.js file is 56 percent um it's it's um and then the the directives here are really nice that's 100 percent coverage and then the service.js these are all angular uh, application files so 
so the, the total and the average for the total is 65 ish percent right so you're getting this information now uh, this is all fine but how do you know what what of this this uh, 50 well 100 minus 55 whatever that percentage is how much of that is the 44 percent what is what are those that are not covered right so in order to know that and in order to get a more visually appealing report what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the coverage reporter to html and i'm giving it a root uh, folder called um, coverage so now if i run the if I run the application, if I run Karma again to run my unit test, so this time you're not seeing any of the unit test information. So the, sorry, the code coverage information on the screen here, but what has happened is there is a coverage folder. That's what I provided here, right? So inside that, in the, uh, in the phantom JS folder, so you see an index.html file. So this gives you an HTML version of the same information. So let me just keep this side by side and you can see that the numbers actually matching. So it says 19 out of 34 are block are covered, 10 out of 17 are covered and 11 out of 11 are covered, right? So again, here eight out of 19 are not covered, right? Now the functions are not covered and things like that. So let's, let's go ahead and dig deeper into this one. So I can go into individual files. And then when I click on that version, it opens that file and tells me which, what lines, what blocks are not yet covered. So I can start writing unit tests for them, right? So that's that's um, how you can make use of, of this tool. It's really powerful. We have to start writing unit tests for just about anything. A lot of websites are becoming heavily dependent on JavaScript code. Uh, but the, the scary thing is most of it is not tested. Right, um, it gets tested sometimes only in production environment, which is a scary, thing, a scary thing to to even imagine. Right, so uh, that's pretty much what I had for this session. I've I had set this whole thing up, and then uh, I had to reimage my machine, and I kind kind of forgot how to how to do that. So it took me the the same amount of searching and figuring out process. Right, so that's the reason I'm doing this. So if you have done it in the past, this is this video will be like a. a good reference for you and of course if you're doing it for the first time here are all the steps that you need to follow right so guys thank you so much i hope this was useful for you and um, let's see what other videos i can do in future for you thanks bye bye